Hi everybody, welcome back to Aqua Collective. I'm Trial Clip Super Alice, and today I just want to give you a little walkthrough of some progress with my system. Um, kind of follow up real quick about the last video I made. I've been meaning to make more videos, but I just haven't had time. Um, so you know I had the ammonia spike, and I talked a little bit about some things that you can do to utilize an ammonia spike to your advantage. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make a video about the ensuing nitrite spike that will follow an ammonia spike. Um, and that can be just as dangerous to your fish as an ammonia spike, so you want to monitor really closely. I tested uh, two to three times a day uh, during that period uh, just to make sure you know everything was was stabilizing uh, and it took a while. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly how many days I could look back at my logs and and see, but for the purpose of this video, I just kind of want to show you some of the measures that I've had to take. Uh, you can see I got some pretty rapid growth going on in the grow bed here uh, in just a couple of weeks. Um, everything's doing really, really well. Um, had a tinge of nitrogen burn. I think on one tomato leaf and there's a, a sunflower that turned a little but uh, and those aren't going to be in the system forever these are I just over planted uh, I'm starting everything for my out, outdoor garden indoors here um, but what I did is and this is crucial is is the biofiltration system that I have in, in place um, nitrosominas are really easy to develop uh, you know they can develop under a wide variety of conditions totally uh, wild ranges of temperature and pH they're just if there's ammonia present um, you're you're gonna get nitrosominas it's just part of the nitrogen cycle um, hard to avoid them now what nitrosominas do is they turn ammonia and ammonium into uh, nitrites and uh, nitrites can be uh, very dangerous for your fish like I was saying before um, and the first two stages of my biofiltration those first two buckets that's really a breeding ground for nitrosominas um, what I needed to do was create nitrobacter uh, to convert those nitrites into nitrates and it's absolutely crucial for all aquaponic systems. Uh, the bacteria part of the cycle is, is just as important as any other part of the cycle. Um, so I had to install these two more buckets here. Um, they don't match. I didn't realize that I bought uh, unmatching buckets. Um, and they were all out of lids, but so it looks a little sloppy and I'm getting over that uh, my anal retentiveness I'm, I'm letting go of a little bit here <laughs> but what I did was I, I took the the second filter or second stage of the fil biofiltration and I ran it to the bottom of, of this filter bucket and inside this filter bucket is extruded ceramics and extruded ceramics are really helpful um, because they're going to help you develop nitrobacter. Um, a lot of people argue that nitrobacter need an anaerobic environment to develop in and they, they will develop in an anaerobic environment um, and an aerobic environment. So uh, it doesn't really matter what the respiration of, of this level of biofiltration is. Um, you just need something to trap uh, bacteria and ammonia and nitrites uh, in order to form your nitrobacter. Uh, and they prefer to grow in the dark at higher temperatures and higher pH. Um, and that's not something I wanted to play around with. I didn't want my pH any uh, higher than than flat out neutral. I, I keep right around 7 to 7.4 all of the time. Um, so it started developing in there and then I put this last bucket in and inside here you can see I just have a, a handful or so of some bio balls I plan on installing some more and putting uh, an air pump in here with a, uh, an air stone in the bottom to help some mineral growth in there um, 
what this does is now it just trickles into the grow bed and I can't imagine that it's any more than 40 gallons per hour I mean it's it's really slow um, it takes about an hour and a half for the grow bed to fill um, but thankfully the the bell siphon that I have set up uh, is very sensitive so it once it starts to overflow it takes about 45 seconds for it to flush and this whole entire thing which is about 108 gallons, 110 gallons, um, but it's displaced water, so uh, because of all the grow media, uh, will drain in about uh, about six minutes, just a little under six minutes. But I have a stabilized system now. All of my levels are are appropriate to to move on, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, I always intended on putting in another grow bed and that's what we're getting ready to do uh, mind the old strawberry tower there that means nothing it's just where I put it um, and I decided why not add another fish tank you know while you're at it um, so and that was really easy to do just fasten the two together with some rubber couplings and a piece of two inch PVC um, and then lay a bunch of extension cords over um, that's a whole nother video by itself. We'll talk about electricity and water later. Um, this is great. I this is, I'm glad. I wish I could have done this with the first stage of the system, because uh, this will give me an opportunity to play with a variety of styles of bell siphons um, before I I commit to to any particular one. Um, so I, I'm going to have some fun playing around with this one, but. Eventually, I'm going to have, you know, that overflow that's going straight down into the sump is going to lead over. Uh, I have some interesting ideas for a new filtration system uh, where I have a couple of broken vacuum cleaners that are super mega vortex whatevers. But I'm, I'm going to use the, the super ultra mega vortex filters uh, inside of five gallon buckets just to see how they work. Um, so that should be interesting. Anyway, there's the system um, getting ready to expand. I'm just waiting for a good rainstorm uh, to collect some more water and do a little bit more than just top off this next time. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for checking back, and I will keep you all posted.